Peter, it's time to practice. Not right now. I'm busy. Hi, I'm Jody St. Clair, and this is Adventures in Suzuki Parenting. Does this look familiar to you? Are your teenagers resisting practice still, and you feel like you shouldn't need to remind them anymore? Today we're going to explore when do I stop reminding my child to practice. We start out with the intention of cultivating independence. We start out by planting the seeds of independent practice and ownership in playing their instrument. But sometimes it doesn't feel like it's going fast enough for the parents, and we want to have independent practicers earlier on. So um, in the Suzuki, philosophy, parents are very involved in the beginning. And we're going to talk about kind of how we move away from that as time goes. In middle school, uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, 10, 11, 12, we're going to be starting to see some more independent practice. And that could be gradual, like your child doing something very familiar on their own, um, or your child maybe doing some of their new spots and then coming and checking in with you about it after they've tried some on their own. Really, you're going to want to talk to your teacher about what is going to look best for your child when they start doing more independent practice. But can we expect that we won't need to remind them about practice? I'm going to ask you, do you expect your middle school child to handle all of their scheduling on their own? How much are they handling their homework? And do they need reminders about what homework to do and what is going to be due when and keeping, keeping a planner and all of, all of that kind of time management skills? Different children arrive at this point at different times. So there's no blanket, yeah, this is the way they are, this is the way they're not. So you may find that some children are extremely independent and able to manage homework, manage their schedule very well, and some need a lot of support still in this area. And so that is a really good indicator of how much you might need to remind your child about practice. If you're needing to remind about homework or help manage assignments due and everything like that still, you're probably going to need to be reminding about practice. And I think that's a really normal point at this age. When I'm teaching lessons, time management is definitely one of the things we talk about a lot because kids at this age are really starting to learn how to do that and how to implement that in successful ways. Then you get into your high school age. And, and at that point, around 13, 14 to 18, um, you know, you're really going to maybe see some more initiative about practice. But I, you know, practice is a little bit of, um, you know, a different animal than uh, assignment. So I would say, is your child one who paces out their homework assignments and makes sure that they do them gradually over time? Or are they always kind of in high priority mode? Are they always doing the assignments that are the top priority and always feel kind of a little bit behind? So for those students who are kind of only in high priority mode, it's rare that practice is in high priority mode until the day before the lesson. So if you're seeing that this is um, what your child's habits are starting to be developed as what's most important, I only have time for that, then there may, be need, there may need to be a bigger conversation about how to manage your time so that you're getting in little bits of things every day. I mean, that's an ideal world. We all know that things don't always work that way. Sometimes something comes up, it becomes high priority. But when we normally are kind of functioning that way, when something like that pops up, we really have room to give it 
the space and time it needs instead of it always just constantly being that attitude. So if your student or child is really in this kind of high priority mode, they're going to need a lot of support in their practice. And if you want to start edging away from that support, you can figure out ways that maybe you can help them manage their um, priorities, their assignments a little bit better. Um, and talk, you know, have conversations with your teacher again about how to kind of balance those things. We've, um, so, and how to make practice really a higher priority on a daily um, basis. If your student child is really able to handle doing things over long periods of time, starts assignments well before they are due, that kind of thing, then you're going to be able to see a better practice um, attitude and probably a little bit better practice. And you know, you may be going, whoa, it's really hard for me to do that. So, um, you know, I would say that Learning a Suzuki instrument is always a chance for growth for everybody involved, teachers, parents, students. So it may be if you if you yourself kind of function in that high priority mode and not in doing things ahead of time, you may find that it's a place of growth for both you and your child and to really set them up and yourself up for success. Um, if your child is managing their own schedule, if they are... Um, if they're managing self-care well and um, and managing uh, assignments really well, then I would say you probably are not needing to do uh, very much reminding. And that's kind of the areas you can look to improve, and then you can you'll see improvement in practice as well. Um, there's a really good chance that you will never have be able to like stop reminding your child about practice while they're living under their, your roof. Some of these things are just things that people learn as they go out on their own more, as they become young adults and um, have to, are kind of forced to manage those things. We can give our children the tools for success, but um, that doesn't mean they always implement them um, right away. They may implement them as they become more independent by living on their own or whatever that may be. Um, so do not feel like you have failed in some way if you still need to uh, remind your child that it is time to practice and, and kind of help to motivate them that way. It's often one of the last bits of parent involvement and support that you will be implementing in their later years. So enjoy as much as you can providing that support in that way for now and your child will thank you for it later. They may not be thanking you for it now but they will thank you for it later. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did it would be so helpful to me if you like subscribe and you can hit the bell to make sure you get notifications for new videos coming out. Happy practicing!